<laughs> All right. So what I'd like to do, our last module tonight, is to talk about um, the integumentary system. So this is our first system. Systems are made of organs. And the integumentary system is comprised of the skin, the hair, the nails, the glands, and the teeth, which we won't be talking about the teeth. But the skin is our cell membrane. It is our physical barrier that basically says what's inside the skin is me, what's outside of the skin is not me. And a cool thing to know is that developmentally, the skin developed with the nervous system. So the skin and the nervous system actually <coughs> come from the same tissue. Okay. And it's a waterproof barrier. It's relatively puncture proof. It weighs 18 to 22 pounds, depending on your size. These are the fun factoids, so try to keep up. Um, it has 22 square feet of surface area. Um, which I was trying to think about, this is about four feet by five, right? So this board is what, 20 square feet of surface area. So your skin would fill out this, um, you know, when we talk about absorption, right, as an herbalist, I think about how do I, you know, why do I think about the skin as an herbalist? Well, because it's one of the places that I get herbs into the body. And it's also uh, an area that's wounded, so I have to know how to heal the wound. So that's another thing that we'll be talking about. But 22 square feet, if I could rub peanut butter all over and hope it to, you know, no, you don't really rub peanut butter. But um, it's not the biggest organ to get all the, um, it's not the biggest surface area in the body. We'll get to those, the digestive system and the respiratory system. But it is a method of getting things into the body. Okay. More fun factoids. Um, the size of, if we took a size of a skin, a piece of skin the size of a quarter, I don't have these memorized, you would have three million cells. Okay, this is the size of a quarter. Three feet of blood, I'm sorry, not three feet. Um, yeah, three feet of blood vessels, three feet of lymphatic vessels, 19,000 sensory receptors, and um, 100 sweat glands and 50 nerve endings. So that's all in the size of a quarter. 15? 50. 50. Yep. You shed your whole skin about 840 times over the course of 70 years in your life. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You shed a million cells per hour. This is going to get a little gross. One. <laughs> 1.5 pounds per year and 40 pounds of skin in a lifetime. And guess where it ends up? In your bed. Dust. In your bed and dust. <laughs> if you don't believe me, the next time you change your sheets, take that bottom sheet, collect it all up, oh, and take it outside in the sunshine and give it a good shake and watch yourself go away. <laughs> All right, so thinking about the skin and the functions of the skin, one of its big functions is protection. It's your leathers, right? And it protects you against physical abrasion, chemical abrasion. It protects you against the damaging rays of ultraviolet radiation. It protects you from losing too much water, so you don't lose a lot of water. It also, because you produce sebum, it also protects you against drying out. So it has its built-in, own built-in moisturizer. It's also an organ of elimination. Your other organs of elimination are your lungs, your digestive system, and your kidneys. And if any of those are not working as well, your skin will take over. It'll try to 
to eliminate out of your skin. I always like to do this little caveat. No, you don't poop out your skin. <laughs> but you can eliminate waste out of your skin. <laughs> I have to be careful what I'm saying, you know. But I'm pooping. All right, it's also a temperature regulator. How do we do that? Well, really awesome. Five to 10% of all your blood is in your skin. So, you're really hot. What does your body do? It shunts the blood to the surface. And your face turns red. The surface of your skin turns red because the blood's moved there and you're gonna get rid of the heat. The reverse is true. If you were to go outside naked and it's 30 degrees out, your skin would not be red. I mean, it would pink up a little bit at one point, but it would turn pale because the body goes, oh my goodness, it's too cold. Get the body, get the blood away from the skin. And then of course you come back in and it turns beet red because it tries to warm it back up. The other way that we regulate temperature is by sweating. We put the water on the surface of our skin and then it cools. It evaporates and it actually cools it as it leaves. awesome ability. You can go outside, not this time of year, but from March until October, and stand in the sun and you start making vitamin D. You have the ability to just manufacture vitamin D. And the most potent form of vitamin D is the kind you make. Yes, it's important, especially anywhere above Atlanta, Georgia, in the winter months, it's actually a good idea to take vitamin D supplements unless you've stored up a lot of vitamin D over the summer. Um, but the most potent form is the kind you make. We'll talk a little bit about that. Another function of the skin is it's the biggest sense organ you own. Right? You got sense of uh, sight and hearing and taste and smell all in your head, but the sen sense of the, your touch, sense of touch, all over the skin. So sensation. I also like to add here is that the act of grooming engages your parasympathetic nervous system. And you do that with your skin. You groom your skin. You groom your friend's skin. Right? But that act of grooming actually engages the rest and digest parasympathetic. Then if I put down here all the things that can happen to skin, right? So all the things that I might see as nerves that has happened to the skin, right? We got bruises, cuts, stings, or bites, burns. What am I missing here? Oh, rash. Rash, thank you. Oh, infection. The cool thing is that no matter what you do to the skin, it only does one thing in response. It inflames. So if you understand inflammation, you can work with every single trauma to the skin. So, we will have an entire lecture, a whole module on inflammation. For right now, it's the only way your body has to heal. It is a healing state. Acute inflammation is the only way your body has to heal. It is healing. Drink the Kool-Aid now. Okay. We don't want to get rid of acute inflammation. It is the only way the body has to heal itself. Acute, uh, chronic inflammation is another story. But this we want. Uh -huh.